All right. I know um, that we are really excited for you guys to join us today with our deal day, drop everything and learn. Today, we are going to be covering Pear Deck and I'm super excited about this because this is an integrated or an in, interactive tool that can be integrated into almost any learning management system. It can be used on its own. It can be utilized through a, a Google Slides. Um, it has lots of versatility and is great for student engagement. It also has a feature that allows you to have data informed instruction. And today bringing this awesome tool to you are two of our specialists from the digital learning unit. We have Katie Pittenger, who is the Regional Specialist for Arkansas River Education Service Cooperative and the South Central Education Service Cooperative. And then we have Sherry Kennedy, who is coming to you from Crowley's Ridge Education Service Cooperative. And she also serves Northeast Education Service Cooperative. And as you all know, oftentimes when we are presenting in a live session like this, there are all kinds of things that are happening in the background. And I just wanna let you know that myself and Katie are joining you from Five Main and we are in Q cubicles and we have shared office spaces and there's a lot going on around us so if you hear some unusual things in the background we just want to apologize for that on the front end but I think the pandemic has all taught us a little bit of understanding and grace and so we're just asking for a little bit of that today as we come to you with this great information so at this point Katie and Sherry I'm handing it off to you thank you Kirsten um, today we are going to talk about Pear Deck and um, you don't, there's not anything that you're going to actually have to do on your side. Um, so you guys can just sit back and, and learn a little bit more about how to use uh, Pear Deck. So it is a, a Google supported um, application. Um, it runs with Google Slides and all you have to do to create one of these uh, Pear Deck presentations is actually just start a blank a uh, new presentation. Um, Google has add-ons, as everybody knows, and Pear Deck is one of those add-ons. So in order to use Pear Deck, all you have to do is at the top of your screen on your toolbar, um, you can select an add-on, and this is the um, image that would come up for Pear Deck. And you click and install that um, application, and then it will run and work with your Google Slides. So once Pear Deck is open, it actually opens a toolbar um, on the right side of your screen. And there's lots of different things that you can do from this toolbar. They have a template library, and I'm gonna click through and show you a couple of different templates um, that they have. And then there's several different question types and other features that are on the toolbar that it brings up for you. So in the template library, it starts out, they have um, some, some lesson slides that are already pre-built for you that go in the beginning of the lesson, during your lesson, and the end of your lesson. So it's very easy to start one of these and you don't have to, you know, re reinvent the wheel. It gives you some places to start. Um, so this is an example of a beginning slide, beginning of the lesson. Um, so it's where you could give some instructions, uh, have your bell ringer, and if you'll notice at the bottom, it has a bar down here that says don't remove. Um, so this is actually a slide that the students can interact on and they can actually write their answers to their bell ringer directly on their slides, on their screen. Um, so it will give them a box to type in on their screen and, and they can answer your questions. And you can also present those um, to the class. On all of these templates, it has in the uh, in the speaker notes at the bottom, um, it tells you about the slide and it tells you how you can change the slide if you're not comfortable with, with that particular response uh, format. And so it gives you a, um, a lot of tools in your tool bag right off the bat. Um, this is an example of a during the lesson slide. I know that this would have been very helpful um, you know, in, in the classroom when I was teaching um, to know kind of where we're at in the lesson. And so this uh, slide would actually have a blue icon that the students could drag and drop um, where they actually feel that they are um, during the lesson as far as if they need help and things like that. And again, this slide um, has 
uh, information in the speaker notes that guide you on, on what type of question this is. Um, another during the lesson uh, type of slide is a mind map. Um, and it gives you a place that the students can, they can draw anywhere on the slide. So they could put a shape, they could write text. Um, they, they can just uh, use this to put all their ideas together. And what happens is, is that um, on your screen that you're presenting to the class, it would populate the students' answers. And you have the option, and I'll show you that here in just a few minutes, that you can um, you can wait and have them let them have some, some independent think time, and then you can show their answers, and it will populate the students' answers in different places on the screen so that you can share and kind of brainstorm um, as a whole group. Um, and then this is an end of the lesson example. So, you know, pretend your friend was absent from class today and, and how would you explain that lesson? So this would be another opportunity for students to, you know, do a quick exit ticket and respond to the lesson. And there's lots of different pre-made examples. Um, you, you know, you can edit the text and things like that on the slides. Um, but it does help you collect all of that information. You collect the students' responses as you go through the presentation. So one of the other um, things that it has on the templates, it's got specific um, categories. So if you are, um, if you're looking for a specific type of question based on your content and things like that, it gives you some pre-made templates that you can work from and kind of start your presentation. So this is a critical thinking example. Um, so you could put the two concepts that you're looking at and the students would have an opportunity um, to, um, it says at the bottom, it tells you what they can actually do, that they can draw anywhere on the slide. So they could write their, their responses here in the middle um, to compare the concepts. This is a social uh, and emotional learning slide. Um, so if you, um, if you are trying to incorporate that and, and make some connections with your students, they have an opportunity that they can, um, you know, tell you kind of what's going on with them. <clears throat> There's also some that have like a sliding scale where the students can rate kind of where they're at, the, where their stress level is and things like that. So there's lots of good ways that you can connect with your students and just kind of gauge where they're at as you're going through your lesson. Um, this is an example where you could have some diagram, which they just gave a generic um, example of a B, and you could have your word bank here to the side, and the students could write in their, uh, their responses, or they could even draw lines from the word in the word bank to the different um, places for their answers. Um, again, this was one for um, um, that you can draw, excuse me, you can draw lines on. Um, so if you wanted students to identify something on a map, um, you can do that as well. Um, you can have them create a bar graph. And one of the things that's um, new to me as far as Pear Deck is if you look down here in the bottom corner, there's this little icon that says excavate and expand. And there's some different things that they've started pulling into Pear Deck. And I'm going to switch over to, um, to this page that tells you a little bit more about it. Um, so they have Pear Deck Teaching Truths. And each of the slides that has a specific icon, um, like this one's uh, Tackle with Tenacity, it tells you a little bit more about the intention of that slide and what they're trying to get students to do. So there's several new things um, that excavate and expand. Um, you know, it tells you a little bit more about what the purpose is for that type of question. So that's really um, neat. And I think that's something that's, that's cool uh, to be able to, you know, explain why is it that we're doing this particular thing. And you can show how you're using this tool to help students expand their knowledge. Um, they have sample math questions. Um, a science question, which this is one of the drag and drops. And um, you can change the different types of icons as well. This one they use uh, looks like a compass um, where you could drag and drop this to the location of the hemisphere 
or excuse me, which hemisphere is experiencing winter. Um, this one is for social studies, looking at primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. So they would be able to choose A, B, or C, um, which, which one answers the question about what type of source you might put in there. Um, language arts, we've got a story map. Um, and so students can draw anywhere on this slide. You may, uh, you could use this even working in groups if you had one person in each group do a different part um, of the story map and fill this in as they're working. Um, something that's new to me and fairly new to Pear Deck is something called Flashcard Factory, which I actually just learned about this week. Um, and it is really, really neat. I'm going to switch over to the slide in the, um, in the speaker notes about this. It gives you a link to go to the, the Flashcard Factory. So when you go to Flashcard Factory, it's actually like an application within the application. Um, so you can set up your own flashcard list of words and definitions, and then you can launch the practice during your pair deck. Um, and so students can actually practice with the vocabulary on matching um, words and definitions. And then you can take their, how they did, you can actually see that information um, and see how they responded uh, with each of the the uh, the cards. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like. They have templates as well. So it opens up for all these different um, Pear Deck activities that you can include. And right here it says Pear Deck vocabulary. So if you go to create a vocabulary list, it opens up another screen and you can actually, you can type them in yourself. So you can type in the term and definition. You can import them from, uh, I believe it's a Google Sheet. Um, you can also go to, um, let me go back. You can find a vocabulary list over here on the left hand corner and it actually opens up and gives you uh, different vocabulary suggestions based on the grade level. So for example, I taught sixth grade. So if I click on the sixth grade um, list, it gives me some example words to know. And all I have to do is copy this list so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do all of them. Copy the list and then open the vocab editor. And when I paste it, it will paste them all in their own term. And sometimes like it's got a space, so it made a, a, a term where there's not one. And then you can add in your definitions and you can actually play the flashcard factory. So uh, when you launch the flashcard factory, I'm just gonna start the game anyway, even though it says I'm missing definitions. It gives you the same options as you do when you're launching a Pear Deck um, on how students can log in. So they would log in using the Pear Deck code and then you clock in and it's like you are in the shift. You can put them into groups in a day shift and a night shift since it is a factory. That's kind of how it's set up or you can shuffle the teams and then you start the game and let's play. So the students would actually be working independently on their terms and matching the words and definitions and things like that. And then once they've put in some data, you go to the next phase, which is quality control. And it's gonna give me some errors because I didn't have anyone actually working. Um, and after we've, you've done moved on to quality control, then you can go to the shipping phase. And it actually allows you to take all the data from what the students actually did using their flashcards and you can export it and you can actually see that information and see who, who's getting the concepts and who's not. So this is something that I think is really, really cool. Um, it's something that's, that's um, you know, like I said, new to Pear Deck and also new to me. Um, and I'm excited to see what this looks like, um, you know, in practice. So they also have, um, can, well, they're not, they're not very long presentations, but they do have um, starter presentations that already have some things going for you. Um, and so you can look at the paireddeck.com slash templates and it gives you some different options. Um, so like this has a, um, this first example is a Pear Deck template beginning of class. 
and it gives you a couple of, of templates already put together um, that would be a good starter to a lesson. Uh, the different types of questions. So you obviously you have a text where they, the students can type in their answer. You have choices where they can pick from um, some options. They can type in numbers. Uh, the website is, uh, it works with the features like the, uh, the what do we just do? Sorry, the flashcard factory. Okay, that would be a website template. And then the bottom two are premium features um, where they can draw or they can Another premium feature is adding audio to your slides. Um, but I did I did look into that a little bit because I've not um, purchased any myself, but it is, it's $149.99 a year for an individual, but they also have school and district pricing. So your your school may want to, to check into that and see um, what kind of deals that they can get for that. Or if it's something that you or your team want to look into, um, if you have classroom funds available, you could use that. You can also try the premium for 30 days for free as well. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that EverFi has um, created some, some PowerPoint, or excuse me, some Google Slides with um, Pear Deck that have several interactive features. And I've got a link here to um, a mental wellness example. Um, but EverFi partners with organizations and educators to transform the way education is delivered. Um, and so they have already created some things for you that if you're looking for something specific, you can search through their templates and see what they've already got started. So if you are new to Pear Deck, at the bottom of your toolbar, um, it will have this little lady pop up for you to create your free account. And so all you would need to do is go in and create your account. You would check your, uh, put in your user level as a teacher. Um, if you enter your school, uh, if you actually, if you log in with Google, if you're a Google, if you have a Google school account, um, it will automatically link you to your school. And if your school already has purchased Pear Deck, it will automatically put you to that premium level. Um, at the top of the toolbar, it has a little button that says start lesson. So when you're ready to go with your lesson, um, you'll click start lesson and it opens up the option for you to either do a student paced mode or to do it in real time. And I have used this in the classroom. Um, last year I was teaching face to face students and virtual students. And so I would set up a student paced mode for my virtual students and then instructor pace for those that students that would be on campus. When you click the student pace mode, it pops up where you can share a link. If you're using Google Classroom, you can share it straight to Google Classroom. And then you open up your um, teacher dashboard and it tells you, it gives you some options. You don't have to necessarily use it on your, on the same device. You can open the tool, the, the teacher dashboard from a separate device if you would like to. And it opens up, I had started a, a presentation just to kind of get an idea of what it looks like from the teacher side. So this was my, the beginning phase of, of my planning for today. Um, when you start the teacher or the student paced side, it pops up and it looks like the presentation with the, the tile view over here to the side. And at the bottom, it has a, a bar that says student pace. And you have the option to stop the student pace um, and, and start a, uh, a classroom session. Um, or when you click on these little dots down here, it pops up some different options um, where you can invite someone else to teach. You can end the session. You can change it to a live session. Um, or you can turn off the student pace where they just can no longer access um, the, the presentation. And then um, after you started it, all you have to do for students to be able to access it is just to not click that end session button. As long as the session has not been ended, you can close the window and the Pear Deck session is still live and students can still access it. The other option with the instructor paste, um, 
it will pop up a code for students to type in. So they would go to joinpd.com and type in the code. And once the students have logged in, um, it will tell you that you can start class. So I did a little demo um, with just, I logged in myself to show you what it would look like. So um, after the students have logged in, it comes up in a similar fashion. It has the presentation, and then at the bottom, it's got the bar. Um, it also has an option for you to see any notes that you've written on the slides if you're looking at the teacher dashboard. And down at the bottom, it has a couple of different uh, things. It still has the, the three dots, like the, uh, self, the student pace version, uh, where you can create, turn this into a student pace. So if you get to a certain point in the lesson and you decide you want the students to finish on their own, you can change it to student pace. Um, you can open your dashboard on a new device. So if you have the presentation going, but you wanna see what students are doing, on your iPad or on your laptop while you're, you know, mobile around the room, you can do that. Um, and then there are a couple of other buttons. So it's got show responses and lock screens and new prompt. So show responses obviously would show you what the students are doing and it would populate that information on the screen um, that you're projecting. You can lock the screen. So if you're you're talking about some student answers, but someone is drawing silly things on the side that's still populating while you're trying to teach, you can lock their screen where they can no longer do that or no longer put in answers. And then you have the option to do a new prompt. So if you are in the middle of things and you decide, hey, I need to monitor and adjust and give them an opportunity to respond to something, you can choose a prompt and it will automatically pop in a new um, a new slide for you where they can like do a KWL, they can reflect on the day's activities and you can do that um, live while you're presenting. So just to let you see what it looks like on the teacher side, if this was uh, an example slide and it's a drag and drop, so on the projector, um, you would see the dot that the student selected. Okay, so if this was just this was just me doing this. So if other students put their responses in, then it will keep populating those and putting it up. On the student side, they see something similar to what's on your screen, and they just move the dot to where they want it to be, and their 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 um, what they entered would go up on your screen. Same thing with um, like the example of a graph. Um, as the students are putting in their answers, it will populate on your screen. And on the student side, it gives them a toolbar at the bottom. So they have some different options for how they can put in their answers. They can erase their answers. But all of this stuff does populate on your screen once you show the student responses. Um, so, you know, if this was my my thing that I entered, this was what my screen would look like and that information would pop up here um, on the main screen that everybody can see. So um, when you get ready to end your live session, um, you can end it without naming it. I wouldn't recommend that, um, but you know, you can always change the name later if you decide you don't uh, really like what you called it in, in the moment. Um, and then it gives you an option to reflect and review. So you can uh, click this button here that um, generates some takeaways. And that's something that I previously, when I used uh, Pear Deck, it did not give us the option to do that. Um, you can share it to Classroom as well. And when you click for it to, to generate some takeaways, it brings up, um, you know, an option for you to publish those takeaways and then it gives you a link that you can share with students or if you don't want to share with students and you just want it to have for your own information you can do that as well and what that does is it it takes a few minutes but it creates this document and I will open up the, the takeaway document from my demo which obviously there wasn't a whole lot in here but it gives you an entire summary of everything that happened on each of the slides. So any of the students' responses for slide one would show up in the boxes. So this is how you can look back and see what the students actually did on, um, on the lesson. So for this slide here, that was the beginning slide, 
it would give the student responses next to it. So you can see a summary of everything that happened during that session. Okay, if for some reason you close your window and you can't get back, you're not sure how to get back to your lesson, um, at the top of the toolbar where it says start lesson, there's these three lines here. And when you click that, it opens up some different options for you to share your lesson. Um, you can require students to join with their email or you can turn that feature off as well. And then down here, it says review sessions. And if you click that review session button, it opens up um, a place on your dashboard where it shows you what you currently have open. So I had a, a, a demo that I started that was the live version. And so once I close that, it tells me that status. And then I had my example student paced version. And if I wanna go back to that session, all I have to do is come here and click on that session link. So you can get back to those student pace. So um, when I did this in my classroom, I had a different student pace for each class period um, because some of them were in some different places, but it also helped me um, for, for feedback purposes, I had all of one class in one presentation that I could look at their feedback. So um, this Pear Deck is an awesome way to keep our students engaged and keep them, um, you know, a, a interactive and give you some uh, formative feedback along the way and uh, students don't feel like they're doing a lot of work. It's, you know, it's not something that they're having to submit and turn in. And it's very informal as far as the way that you're collecting this information. Um, if you have any, um, you know, further questions about digital learning, uh, as far as using Pear Deck or any tools like that, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the digital learning unit. Um, there's lots more um, example templates and things like that that you can explore if you go into Pear Deck on your own. Um, as well as those Everfi presentations that were really, really awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions for me or for us as, as Team Digital? Okay, well, I think um, that either we have some really shy people or I just did an awesome job. Uh, yes, we can send you a link of the video and uh, we'll send the link as well of the, the PowerPoint um, so that you can have the resources and see those templates as well. Um, do we have any other questions? Yes, we are all ready for Christmas break. <laughs> Excited to spend some time with family. <laughs> Absolutely. So Katie and Sherry, thank you so much. They collaborated on this presentation and getting this together and they were supported by our Assistant State Coordinator of Digital Learning, Amanda Perry. Um, I failed to mention at the beginning of this, but I am Kirsten Wilson. I'm the State Coordinator of Digital Learning and I oversee the Digital Learning Unit as a whole. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you guys, but I also wanted to let you know that this deal days, which is happens the third Thursday of every month is something that's going to continue into next year. And that means in a couple of weeks. Um, so January 20th of 2022 at 1130, we are going to be doing a presentation on Canva. The title of that is what's the deal with Canva? And um, with that, you will have our specialists and resident experts, Rainbow Bagsby and Emily Powell Carpenter, and they will be sharing with you some of the really awesome tools that are in Canva and ways that it can be utilized both for instruction, but also in other um, aspects as well. So I encourage you to um, attend that and learn out more about what's the deal with Canva. I also wanted to let you guys know that you can find the digital learning unit on social media, both on Twitter 
and you can find us on Facebook. We share a lot of information there about what we're doing and what's going on with digital learning, but we also share a lot of other things that are going on across the state and great resources and celebrations and those great stories that are happening with school districts, with education service cooperatives, and of course with our state department. Um, so please follow us and then we will follow you back um, because we love to know those great stories that are happening on your, your, in your districts um, and in your schools. In addition to that, we will be sharing the recording for everyone that registered today to attend the old days. And then we will be sharing that recording on social media and coming very soon to a YouTube channel near you is going to be the Digital Learning Unit YouTube. And we will have all of our deal days that we have done so far housed there as well as our future recordings that come along. So if you have missed one of our deal days and would like for access to that, we will be coming out very soon with a YouTube channel where you can go back and grab a hold of that. Thank you so much for attending today. We wish everybody a super happy holiday. Um, we hope that you take time to rest, relax, rejuvenate so that we can get ready for the best year we've had in the last three years, 2022. We really appreciate you guys being here and partnering with us and we look forward to a great future with you. Thank you so much.